Hi there, I'm Paul Belflam and this is Industrial Organization. In this presentation, I would like to present a unified model that we will use to compare price and quantity competition. So the learning objective for this presentation is, as I just said, provide a unified model that we can use to compare the outcomes of price competition and quantity competition. If you want to have some background reading, you can go to the textbook on pages 22 and 23. Well, we already presented part of this model. It is based on example one I gave when we talked about how to model consumers. So the starting point is this utility here, which is called a quadratic utility because we have terms uh, at the second uh, degree here. And this gives basically the net utility for a consumer when consuming goods 1 and 2 in quantities Q1 and Q2. Okay, So this is the gross utility and you, you uh, subtract the total spending P1 Q1 minus P2 Q2. Y, remember, is the budget of the consumer and if you don't remember where this comes comes from i refer you to the presentation about uh, the modeling of the consumers okay remember that when we maximize this net utility with respect to uh, the quantities q1 and q2 which is done here taking the first order conditions we derive the inverse demand functions okay so we express the price of good one and the price of good two as a function of the quantities Q1 and Q2. Okay, so remember that the, de the inverse demand functions are derived immediately from the maximization problem of this uh, representative consumer. And remember as well that uh, A is a parameter that measures the maximum uh, price that consumers are willing to pay for the good. Uh, B measures the link between the price of one good and the quantity of the same good, and D measures the link between the price of one good and the quantity of uh, the other goods. Okay, so it's also a measure of the degree of product substitutability. When D is equal to zero, the two goods are totally independent of one another, meaning that the price of good one, for example, is only influenced by the quantity of good one, but not by the quantity of good two. So that's one extreme case, D is equal to zero independent goods. At the other extreme, we've got, uh, if D is equal to B, then the two goods would be homogeneous in the sense that they are, cannot be distinguished from one another. What is coming from uh, firm one or what is coming from firm two is exactly the same good. Okay, um, what we did, uh, in week one was also to use the system of inverse demands to compute the demands. So to express, as done here, the quantities as a function of prices. Okay, we can do so for D strictly lower than B. If D is equal to B, uh, go back to the slides of week one, we will see there that there is a discontinuity uh, when we express the demand functions. Okay, now if you're interested, uh, I'm not going to go over this in detail, but you can read this in your own, sp your own pace. Um, this uh, function can be generalized to more than two goods. Let me just uh, attract your attention on the final uh, expression here, which is the inverse demand for some good i, which is one among the n goods that the consumer is choosing from. Okay, you can freeze the screen if you want to uh, go over the details of this slide. Right, uh, and same here, this is just a continuation of what was explained in the previous slide. When you've got a given number of goods, and you can also express the demand functions as follows, where A tilde and B tilde are given by these expressions, they depend on the underlying parameters B and D, but also on the number of goods that the consumer can choose from. Okay, we most of the time in the course we are going to stick to two goods, but I just wanted to show you that this can be easily 
uh, extend it to more than two goods. Right, so this model, because we can, from the same uh, consumer problem, derive the demands and the inverse demands, so prices as a function of quantities or the other way around, we can now use this model to uh, analyze a duopoly where firms either choose quantities or choose prices. Okay, so we've got two firms. Firm 1 is producing good 1, firm 2 is producing good 2, and we assume here for simplicity that the marginal costs, so the extra cost of producing uh, slightly more, this marginal cost is constant for both firms, but we don't uh, exclude the possibility that the cost of the two firms be different. So we call C1 the cost of firm 1 and C2 the cost of firm 2. Okay, so we want to contrast two forms of competition, and in this presentation I, I just show you the, the steps uh, that we need to use to go from this model to either the competition in prices or the competition in quantities. Okay, so let's start with the competition in prices, which is sometimes called à la Bertrand, uh, à la Bertrand, if you use an English accent. Um, Bertrand, as we will um, present in the rest of the, this week's material, is uh, an economist uh, who gave his name to this type of competition because he was the first to model it. Okay, so basically what happens here is that firms choose the price of their goods and then quantities will adjust. Consumers will face the prices and decide how much of the two goods they uh, want to buy. Okay, and so if we want to uh, analyze this type of uh, competition, because prices is the main decision of the firms, we want to uh, write the profit function of the firms just as a function of the prices. Okay, so we need to express the quantities as a function of the prices. Okay, and this is why we will use here uh, the demand functions, okay, and write the, the profit of, for example, firm 1 as follow. It's P1 minus C1. This is the excess of price over marginal cost. This is also called the margin uh, times the quantity sold. Okay, and if you replace the uh, demand function by uh, its, its value, well, you've got this profit function here, which firm 1 will maximize by choosing its price. Okay, and you can write a similar uh, profit maximization program for firm 2. Okay. Now, if you want to consider competition in quantities, so that would be another game where instead of choosing prices, firms choose the quantity they will put on the market. Okay. And once these quantities are decided, then the price at which they are sold will adjust. Okay, so what is chosen by the firms here is the quantity, and if we want to analyze this problem, well, we need to do the reverse of what we did before. So we want to express the profit function of the firms only as a function of the quantities. Okay, because quantities, uh, act actually the prices will adjust to quantities. So here we use the inverse demands. The, the expression of the profit is still the same. It's the margin times the quantity. Okay, but here we replace the price by the inverse demand function, and so we have this expression here. Okay, and this is maximized by firm 1 by choosing the quantity it puts on the market. Okay, so in the following presentations, we will analyze separately uh, the competition in quantities and the competition in prices, but because we will start from a common model, we will be able to compare the outcomes of these two types of competition. Okay. Now, just before we do that, let's have a benchmark, some reference point that we will keep in mind. What happens if there is no competition on the market? Okay. And here in this model, we can easily represent this by uh, setting d is equal to zero. Remember, in that case, there is no connection between the two goods in the mind of the consumer, and therefore, there is no connection or competition between the two firms. They are as if there were local monopolies. Each of them is acting separately. Okay, And 
you remember that in that case, if a firm is a monopoly, it controls the whole, the whole demand, and so it doesn't make a difference whether the firm is choosing the quantity or the price, because the firm controls the relationship between price and quantity. Okay, so just to convince you that there is no difference between choice of price or choice of quantity, we redo uh, the analysis here in both cases. So this is what we wrote on the previous slide when d is different from zero. If you set d is equal to zero in this expression, this is what you get. Firm 1 is choosing its price p1 to maximize this function here. 1 over b times p1 minus c1 times a minus p1. I'll let you check that the optimal price, when you solve the first order condition, is a plus c1 over 2. And if you replace this in the demand function, which is a minus p1, uh, sorry, which is 1 over b, a minus p1, uh, you should find q1 star is equal to a minus c1 divided by 2 times b. Okay. Now, redo the analysis, the profit maximization of the firm when it chooses its quantity. Then we start from this. Uh, pro program here, coming from the previous slide, set d is equal to zero in this uh, function here. You see that there is no longer any uh, dependency on q2, which is the sign that we have a monopoly. Okay, And again, solve the first order condition. You should find that q1 star, so the quantity that maximizes profit, is a minus c1 divided by 2b. And if you replace this uh, value here in the, in, in the demand function, sorry, in the inverse demand function, uh, this is what you should find for the price. Now, last step is to compare the solutions of the two problems and realize that they are just the same. P1 star, P1 star, Q1 star, Q1 star. Okay, so this is just to show that if there is no competition, the, cha the choice of prices or quantities doesn't make a difference. We have monopolies, okay, as we will now see in the in the next part of this uh, course, uh, when you've got competition between the firms, then whether they choose prices or whether they choose quantities does make a difference. Okay, And we can already anticipate that the prices that will be observed on the market at equilibrium will be lower than under local monopolies. Okay, Because two firms, when they compete with one another, have a smaller market power than a firm that is uh, the only one in the market, okay? But we will conf uh, confirm all this at a later stage, right? Now, just uh, before we move to the, the next part, uh, we may, for uh, to, to, to simplify our computations, we may sometimes take a, a specific numerical example and we will choose to set a to uh, 1 to 20 and b is equal to 1 and in that case the profits of the two firms will write in this way if we uh, look at the competition in prices and if we look at the competition in quantities this are, these are the profit maximization programs that we will consider okay so 1 to 20 would be the maximum price that consumers are willing to pay and the sensitivity of each price to its own quantity is just normalized to one. Okay, and that's it for now. Thank you for your attention and bye-bye.